Okay, so in the previous videos on dihybrid inheritance, we were looking at unlinked genes where the two genes are located on different chromosomes. In this particular video here, we are going to be focusing on linked genes. And linked genes basically means that the two genes are on the same chromosomes at different loci, as you can see in my example here. So without wasting time, for linked genes or autosomal linkage, if you see the word linked genes or autosomal linkage, they mean the same thing. And for my example, please do not memorize my example, by the way. Um, I'm going to say that gene number one affects the plant height, which makes large T dominant allele makes the plant tall, small T recessive allele makes the plant short, and gene number two affects the flower color, where large R dominant makes it red, small R recessive makes it white. And then in the question, usually they will say that genes 1 and 2 exhibit autosomal linkage. When you see the word autosomal linkage, what exactly does it mean? It means autosomal just means that the genes are on the autosome. Autosome means chromosomes which are not the sex chromosomes. So it does not affect the sex of the organism. And the word linkage here implies that gene 1 and 2 are on the same chromosome. So when you say the word linkage, it would probably mean that the two genes are linked on the same chromosomes. Or sometimes the question will just say genes 1 and 2 are linked. These are enough clues to tell you that we are talking about linked genes and not unlinked genes. So as an example here, I'm drawing out a flower which is tall with red petals and I'm also drawing out two chromosomes and I'm putting two lines. Within each chromosome, they have two lines where highlighted at the top is gene number one and highlighted at the bottom is gene number two. So you can see that genes one and two are linked within the same chromosome, but they are just located on different loci or different positions. So one of the most important things to know is how to write the genotype. Because if I were to say that this parent is a homozygous dominant parent, where for gene number one, it's large T and large T, and gene number two, it's large R and large R. So homozygous dominant just means that for both the genes, it just has the dominant alleles. I want to also compare it with this organism here, which is homozygous dominant as well. So, as you can see, the organism on the right, those two genes are unlinked. Why do I say it's unlinked? Because they are on different chromosomes. This was my example in the previous video for unlinked genes. So, how do you write the genotype for linked genes and unlinked genes? Now, for linked genes, what you have to do is, because the two alleles, large T and large R, are on the same chromosome, you have to write it out as brackets, large T, large R, close bracket. That would say that the large T and large R allele are within the same chromosome. So this is how you know that it is linked. Same thing for the other chromosome as well. Large T, large R within the same chromosome, close bracket. That's it. And then for the unlinked genes, how did we write it? We wrote it as large B, large B, because they are not in the same chromosome, large T, large T. So as you can see here, this is how you write it for unlinked genes. So this is the difference when you're writing out the genotypes for linked genes and unlinked genes. For linked genes, you have to use brackets and the alleles within the same chromosome within the same brackets. And then for unlinked genes, no brackets required because all the alleles are on different chromosomes. So with that being said, let's immediately go into the pattern of inheritance when we are talking about linked genes. So for linked genes, we have a homozygous dominant parent here, which is tall and red. Okay, the genotype is, how do we write it? We write it as large T, large R, close bracket, large T, large R, close bracket. Okay, that's it. And now let's talk about the gametes. What type of gametes would it be able to produce? Remember the chromosomes, just drawing it out on the right there. Chromosomes will undergo DNA replication to become sister chromatids. That's fine. Just coloring it in. And then it will undergo meiosis 1, all right, 
to separate the homologous pairs and then meiosis 2 to separate the sister chromatids. Again, some students will ask me, in this case, if crossover and independent assortment happens, will it affect the alleles? No, it will not affect the alleles because the organism only has large T, large T, and large R, large R. So crossover and independent assortment will not produce genetically different gametes. All the gametes will just be large T, large R, no matter what. So that's fine. Now, let's take another organism that is homozygous recessive. So it's going to be a short and white parent. Because, why is it a short and white parent? Because the chromosomes, look at the chromosomes that it has. It will only have small t, small t, small r, small r. So when you write it out, small t, small r, bracket, small t, small r in another bracket, like that. So the gametes that it can produce, let's just change the gametes on these chromosomes. All the gametes will just be small t, small r gametes, no matter what. So crossover and independent assortment will not produce any genetically different gametes. So when these gametes from the tall red parent fertilize the gametes of the short white parent, all the offspring genotypes will be large t, large r, small t, small r. And the phenotype, what's the phenotype going to be? Because it has large T, it is going to be tall, and it's because it has a large R allele, it's going to be red. So the dominant allele will express itself over the recessive allele. So 100% of the offsprings will be tall and red offsprings, no matter what. Of course, they will be heterozygous. This is how the chromosomes will look like for the offsprings where you can see large T, large R within one chromosome, small T, small R within one chromosome. That's why you write out the genotype like that. So far, so good. Now, it will not be my biology lesson if I do not make it more complicated. So let's see the next part. Now, I want to just focus on one of these heterozygous parents here. So this heterozygous parent, it has one large T, large R within one chromosome, small t, small r within one chromosome, in the pink color chromosome right there. So what type of gametes is it able to produce? So let's look at this. So remember, the chromosomes will then undergo DNA replication. And when they undergo DNA replication, they will produce the sister chromatids. Now, the first question I'll ask my students is, does independent assortment or random assortment matter over here? Some of my students will say, oh, if the bivalence or the homologous chromosomes swap places, it may matter. Okay, so let's say, remember during metaphase one, the chromosomes will line up along the equator, which I've represented in the red line. Okay, and as you can see here on the situation on the left and the right, independent assortment has happened where they, they have swapped places. So, to make life easier, I know the equator is supposed to be um, horizontal, but I'm going to make the equator vertical because it's easier to separate them. So, will random assortment matter? Will it produce genetically different gametes? Some of my students will say yes. Okay, so let's look at it. So, on the situation on the left, homologous pairs will separate where blue goes to the left, red goes to the right, but pink goes to the right, but on the situation on the right here, pink goes to the left, blue goes to the right. Okay, so far so good. And then during meiosis 2, sister chromatids separate. What do you notice? On the left here, it produces large T, large R gametes and small T, small R gametes. And the situation on the right, even after independent assortment happens, what do you notice? Does it produce genetically different gametes compared to the left? No, it does not. It still produces large T, large R gametes and small T, small R gametes. Therefore, in this situation, random assortment or independent assortment does not have any effect when it talks about my example of linked genes here. So, in this case, remember I also told you that to produce genetically different gametes, another process can take place where crossover happens. And what happens during crossover? Synapses will happen where they 
come closer together, crossover will take place where the sister chromatids will overlap at the chiasma and they will exchange genetic information during prophase 1. And if crossover takes place, crossover is a thing that does not necessarily happen all the time. It may happen. So if it happens, then there will be an exchange of genetic information where the chromatids swap places. Where you can see here, the blue sister chromatid has a little bit of pink and the pink sister chromatid has a little bit of blue. So in this case, when meiosis 1 happens, to separate the homologous pairs and meiosis 2 happens to separate the sister chromatids. In this case, you will produce four different types of gametes. Large T, large R, small T, large R, large T, small R, and small T, small R, where you have a new combination of alleles, which is this two right here, due to crossover. Now, when no crossover happens, it produces large T, large R, and small T, small R. When crossover happens, it produces all these four different gametes. So I want you to understand that when these chromosomes are involved in gamete production, when these chromosomes undergo meiosis, it can either take the situation on the left or it can take the situation on the right, right here. Where no cross, either no crossover can happen or crossover may happen. So we don't know for sure because we cannot predict it. But what we can predict is something very interesting. We notice that in this case over here, no matter what, large T, large R gametes are produced more frequently and small T, small R gametes are also produced more frequently. There's a higher chance of producing these gametes. Why is there a higher chance of producing these gametes? It's very simple. Because if no crossover happens, you get large T, large R over there, as I've highlighted. And if crossover happens, you can also get large T, large R. So there is a higher chance of getting large T, large R in both cases. Small T, small R is also the same case because when no crossover happens, you get small T, small R. And if crossover happens, you also get small T, small R. That's why there's a higher chance of producing these gametes, no matter what. But to produce small T, large R gametes and large T, small R gametes, you can only get them if crossover happens. So therefore, there's a lower chance of producing these gametes. So in linked genes, the gamete production is a little bit imbalanced, okay? So in this situation, for the heterozygous organism, where it has large T, large R, brackets, small T, small R, brackets, uh, in, as a genotype, um, when they produce gametes, like I said, because large T, large R will be within the same chromosome, there's a higher chance of producing them as gametes. Because small t, small r was within one chromosome, there's also a higher chance of getting small t, small r gametes as well. But like I said, large T, small r and small t, large r gametes will have a lower chance of being produced because these gametes can only be produced through crossover. And crossover is a process that does not happen all the time. So if you notice my gametes, I've said that more large T, large R and more small T, small R gametes are produced, less large T, small R, less small T, large R gametes are produced. I've written it over there. For the short white parent here, it can only produce one type of gamete, which is small T, small R. Random assortment or crossover will not produce any genetically different gametes at all. Now, in the offspring genotype, here's where it becomes interesting. So let's cross them together. You cross them as how you normally would, where you have large T, large R, small t, small R, small t, small R, small t, small R. Okay, so in this case, write out the phenotype. The phenotype will be tall red because it has one large T allele and one large R allele. Fine. And for this offspring over here, small t, small R, uh, it's short and white because it only has the recessive alleles. Okay. For the other possible offsprings, it can be large T, small r, small t, small r, and small t, large r, small t, small r. So in this case, the offsprings will be tall, white, because they have one large T alleles at least, 
but no large R allele, so it's white in color, and it will be short red because it has one large R allele to make it red, but they don't have any large T alleles, so they will be short. Interestingly enough, the ratio of the offsprings here, if you notice the offsprings, there are offsprings that look like the parents because the parents are tall and red, short and white. So there are some offsprings that look like the parents, where right? they are tall and red, short and white. We call these offsprings the parental type offsprings. There is a higher chance of producing these offsprings. Why is there a higher chance of producing these offsprings? Because, like I said, there are more chances of getting those type of gametes. And if there's a higher proportion and higher chance of getting those gametes, these fertilizations will happen more often and these offsprings are produced more frequently. So there's a higher chance of getting those types. And you also get recombinant type offsprings where they are a mixture of the parents, where uh, these offsprings are tall, white, and short red. So they do not look like the parents at all, but they have mixed features. So in this case, there's a lower chance of getting these offsprings. Why is there a lower chance of getting these offsprings? Because there was a lower chance of producing those type of gametes. Those gametes can only be produced through crossover. So the ratio in this case will not be a one-to-one-to-one-to-one we don't have to know exactly what the ratio is, but we have to know that the parental type offsprings are more commonly produced than the recombinant type offsprings.